the latest of those, Mr. John Settle. Hey, John, welcome back to Keel. How you doing this morning? Well, I'm doing great. You know, I'm a Clemson alumni, oh. so I've got mixed emotions about this. No, I tonight. did not know yes, that. Yes, I knew that. So I'll be asking all the questions in this <laughs> well, interview as McCarty will be gnawing on her wrist. Oh. Um, okay, you're going to court today, John. What are you going to do? Uh, at 830, I'm going to file a lawsuit uh, at the Caddo District Court, a petition for declaratory judgment against the city of Shreveport. And what about? What for? Well, uh, a declaratory judgment is where you ask a judge to interpret a law or and to interpret uh, a certain matter. I'm going to ask the court whether or not the Cross Bayou bond funds can be spent uh, to uh, buy the federal building, the old federal building, for the Cross Bayou development. Now, this goes so, back to, pardon me, this goes back to the 1996 bond money that was set aside to purchase land for a park in the Cross Bayou area. Not all that money has been spent. What's the what's left over, Aaron? Two point two point eight million, I think. Yeah. Okay, John, go ahead. Back to you. Well, that's the question. The proposed development for Cross Bayou uh, Point includes the old federal building on uh, Bannon Street and properties on Caddo Street. Well, clearly, uh, the old Jody Wagner building is is not uh, on the banks of the Cross Bayou or the Red River, so. I don't think that the bond money uh, can be properly utilized to buy that building. Would I be correct in assuming that the genesis of this lawsuit is that John Settle thinks that the Cross Bayou project is a bad idea? Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go that far. I just uh, being a good government kind of guy. I want money to be spent the correct way. Just like Aaron wants to park on Cross Bayou. I feel sure Aaron wants that money from the bond money to be spent on, on the bayou, not up on Bannon Street. Let me ask you this, John, because there was, there's been a lot of talk about this is now on the agenda, this Cross Bayou Memorandum of Understanding. This one's binding. Uh, as this, opposed one, to, this is a binding. This is a binding okay. MOU that they've got on the agenda for tomorrow's meeting, as opposed to the one from last year, which was non-binding. What's the difference? Well, last year was basically a statement of intent saying that, uh, you know, we want to do this. This year I've looked at it, and it, it says that the parties are supposed to do this, that it does have some opt-out provisions, but it's more stringent than the one that was uh, signed last year. Let me ask you a question about it, because it has language in it that you will purchase the land and you will give it to Gateway. Is that legal for a, a government to give a private company land? Because, you know, my company, Town Square Media, we'd like some land, too. Can we have some, too? Well, uh, you know, and, and uh, part of that cross bayou is in Bossier Parish, where my office is. I'd like some land, too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's a real uh, stringent test for um, a government to give property to a private uh, entity, and it requires... Um, Detailed analysis to show that there will be uh, a substantial economic return on the investment. Mr. John, uh, Councilman Willie Bradford has been the biggest backer of the GDC of the Cross Bayou proposal all along, especially after the um, presentation at the Emerging Businesses uh, Subcommittee. Committee. Yeah, yeah. If, if, let's theorize for a second, if Mr. Willie doesn't have the votes, why would he move ahead with this now? Do you think? Because all along, we and everybody else have thought, mm, probably doesn't have the numbers that he needs. What's your thought on that? Why would he introduce this if he doesn't have the numbers? Or do you think people have flipped? Well, I don't know if people have flipped. I, uh, the ones I've talked to in the council, I don't think they've flipped, number one. Number two, uh, my friend Willie has always pushed for uh, economic development, especially for minorities, and I think that he wants to put this to put it to a vote, put it up or down, so we can move on. Um, this cross bayou has been a long time discussion, and and we need to either you know fish or cut bait. And I think he wants to do that. To now, and see. pardon me, an interesting point there that you think in your mind, Mr. Williams, well, let's let's do an up or a down, and if and then and then let's move on. If the council votes tomorrow, if the vote comes as soon as tomorrow and it's say five to two or four to three no, do you sense that's the end of GDC and cross by you at least in this in this incarnation? Uh, yes. I mean, if, if the council doesn't approve uh, this, I mean, I don't see why 
or how it can go along unless they substantially change their friends, their whole plan of action, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is there in your mind a possibility there could be a, a, a I don't want to say a, sh a, a shrunken proposal, a little smaller proposal, i.e., you know, a, a smaller version, we don't really need a 10,000-seat soccer stadium in downtown Shreveport. Let's kind of push that to the side. Is there? Do you see a compromise in that area? Well, first of all, I'm not one of the developers, so I, I don't want to second-guess them, and I really didn't want to second-guess my friend Willie. But if, if you, I've listened to all the presentations. Seemingly, they need the income stream from the proposal that uh, a state office building be... <clears throat> That this, Louisiana rent a new state office building from them, and the Caddo Parish rent a new justice center from them that would provide an immediate income stream. Pardon, and, and they don't have they don't have commitments on any of those. Correct. Another question raises its head: is the the tax incentive? Did that not expire with the end of twenty nineteen? Uh, are you talking about the opportunity zone? Yes, I I am. Um, I'm not a, an accountant or I'm not a CPA type. I I am confused on that. I thought it was, but then I've read some information that it can extend to 2020. And honestly, I just um, I don't know. And and uh, that's critical to their plans along with the TIF. And I don't really want to surmise on that because it's not my field of expertise. Have you heard anything about what uh, which side the mayor may come down on? Because he's been pretty close to the vest as far as everybody we know. I have no idea if it if the resolution doesn't pass, then uh, uh, it's it's dead in the water. If it did pass, then um, in theory he could ignore it or uh, perhaps veto it. Uh, but no, I have not heard any indication or read anything at all about the mayor's position is on this. Do you have any suggestions for the leaders? about what we should do with that two point eight million that is left? I'm still waiting for my park, John. Well, uh, you know, I want, I, uh, personally, I think we, you know, they just acquired in the last uh, four or five months the old Deanna building, the Deanna Protus building. Uh, I think they should build a park down there. I don't know uh, if they need all that 2.8 to build a park, but I think they should build a park down there. And then um, I don't know if they'll spend the 2.8 on it or not. The real question is, can they spend the 2.8 on anything other than a park? Could they put it in the reserve so they could use it for the convention center roof, something like that. But uh, it was designed to be a park, and uh, the, I think it should be spent for the park. 